And I'll introduce myself. I'm Trish Lapidus, and I'm your presenter tonight for the memoir workshop. Um, the first thing I want to go into is the confidence factor. You are writers. You don't have to say, am I a writer? Am I a good enough writer? If you have the desire to write, you are a writer, yes? Oh, no. Oh, okay. I just All right. I thought you had a question. <laughs> um, you can give yourself that right from the start. I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the confidence factor. Most of us have some amount of confidence issues just as persons. I know I do. Um, somebody took away quite a few parts of my confidence when I was young. Anybody else feel you had that happen to you? Somewhere along the way, you, you gave it up somewhere because somebody was pretty critical and, uh, or somebody just didn't seem to value you enough, you didn't matter enough. Um, so let's look at that. There is nothing wrong with any of us except our worry about what is wrong with us. And if you will look at the things that happen to you, perhaps even at something that you would write about tonight, you would find either your own behavior or the behavior of somebody else in your story, behind that is that lack of confidence, that worry. Am I okay? Do I matter? Uh, am I valued? Do I have what it takes? Uh, or am I a throwaway? Am I a flawed human being that just can't do what other people can do? I think we all ask ourselves these questions. And they make us awkward, don't you think, at times, that that's the source of our awkwardness? They even make us sometimes do things that we would turn around afterwards and say, that was wrong, I shouldn't have done that. But if you look at anybody, yourself or anybody else, and you look at even the worst wrong behaviors you can think of, you will find that behind that is that worry. Am I okay? Am I not okay? Am I a worthless human being? And am I welcome on the planet? You know, does anybody, does it matter that I'm here at all? And uh, that I would say, could help you um, understand the people that are in your memories, whether you're writing about them tonight or not. But those people in your memories, those characters, those, the personnel of your memories, pretty much all had that going on and, and probably so did you. So that's the uh, confidence factor in, in life. And I would say for the moment, just give yourself the confidence. Say, you know what? I have everything that anybody has. I have everything I want to have. I'm good stuff. There's one poster from back in the 70s. Does anybody ever remember seeing this one? A little kid is in the poster going like this, and underneath the caption says, I know I'm good stuff, because God don't make no junk. <laughs> remember that one? So give yourself that tonight. Uh, we're all good stuff. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about for just a few moments before we get into the writing is the stages of growth. I'm going to give them to you first in the terms of the ancient fairy tales. And I'm going to send this down so that you won't feel like you have to take more notes than you really need because these are on the, um, they're on the paper. And um, the stages of growth, we can put them in modern terms as we go along, and I will somewhat, but it, the, the ancient fairy tales did this so well and had such good terms for it, I want to do it first in the terms of the ancient fairy tales. And I'm saying ancient fairy tales on purpose because if you think of Disney's fairy tales, that's not what we're talking about. They're kind of, they're children's stories and they're kind of sanitized, but they're not, um, they don't really illustrate the stages of growth anymore because they leave, leave out some essential stuff. Um, I also don't trust Grimm's fairy tales. Uh, you got to get back further than that. Grimm, the brothers Grimm were um, writing within a patriarchal um, mindset, you might say, and believed in violence, believed in punishment, um, and they got stuck at a certain place and they weren't able to get past it. So they altered the ancient fairy tales to be much more horrible than they were. Not that ancient fairy tales don't have some horrible stuff in them. <laughs> they do. <laughs> but um, it has more meaning in the ancient fairy tales. Um, now, the first stage is innocence. And we can see that in our own lives today. Does anyone remember the day or the time 
when you first realized your parents didn't know everything and probably didn't have what it took to raise you? Does anybody ever remember getting to that point? For some, that comes way before the teenage years, depending just on what the parents are doing. For some people, um, I have to say I'm sort of a late bloomer. I didn't get it until I went to college and turned around and looked back. I thought, oh my God, <laughs> what am I facing? And why didn't they prepare me? And that sort of thing. But sooner or later, hopefully not sooner, but it can be soon. Sooner or later, there comes a time when you just know that um, you can't depend on your parents. And what they called that in the um, <coughs> ancient fairy tales was the stage of orphan. You felt like an orphan. You felt like, you know what? I don't have any guidance. I'm all alone here in this forest or this modern world or wherever it is you are. And so that's the second stage. And you can wander as an orphan uh, for some period of time. But as you go along, you're picking up something from the life or the tasks that are in front of you. Um, whatever it is that life dishes out, you're, you're responding in some kind of way to that. And sometimes you might get kind of sick at heart, right? Like you're doing your best. Maybe by this time you, you know, personally in your own life, you're a grown up with children or whatever. Sometimes, has anybody ever just looked at one more um, difficult happening and said, why me? <laughs> that is a legitimate stage, and I want you to honor it. In the ancient fairy tales, it was called the martyr. You know, oh, poor me, you know. I will never forget the day my mother finished putting on supper for her family of uh, seven children and, her, and my dad. And then as soon as we all just got ready to eat, she said, oh, I guess I'm not going to eat. I'm not hungry now. Well, at that point, nobody felt like eating. We felt so bad for our poor, tired mother. You know, she obviously slaved away putting this meal on the table. But she was at that mo moment in the martyr stage. And the martyr stage is apparently, according to these wise old fairy tales, something that we all go through, however briefly or extended. You can meet people who went through it so briefly that they just kind of like were there for a little bit and said, no thanks, I don't want to be in that state of mind. But you also see people who are there for life. Life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, thank you. For the rest of their lives. I mean, you can get stuck in these stages. Some people get stuck in innocence and never experience the fall or any of the other stages. The next stage after martyr is usually warrior. Um, in modern terms, how it would work is, let's just say your kid was out, your, say it's a teenager, your kid was out walking, and he walked across when there was a walk sign. And you saw this because he was just a little ahead of you, and a car banged into him, killed him. And he had a walk sign. He was in the right. Let's just say that your response to that is to go to bat and to say, okay, my kid's gone, but if I can do anything about it, and not another kid's life is going to be lost in this city because of drivers not obeying the, the road signs. So he goes to work on that. He talks to police. He talks to people. He, you know, gets the... Can you imagine that scenario? That is the warrior stage in modern life. We can think of it in older terms, you know, where people, you know, had swords and went out to do physical battle with the dragons or whatever. But in our day, it's something like that. And you can probably think of things in your life that have been like that, right? Usually that's the next stage, although occasionally this, this, the one that follows it actually flips and goes first. And that is the wanderer. At some point, the warrior is finished with, um, that battle, you know, with that um, fight to get something right, you know. And the warrior at that point may say to himself or herself, I don't really know that um, anything I've ever thought is true anymore. And I need to go find out what's going on. Has anybody ever had that thought? What's the scope here on planet Earth? Would somebody tell me what's really happening? I want to know the real scoop. So yeah, the, war the wanderer tends to come from that place. And the wanderer doesn't necessarily recognize anything that's come before. The wanderer is going to start all over. I'm, 
I'm going to just uh, take this whole thing apart called life and I'm going to put it back together in a way that works for me, makes sense for me. Okay. When the wanderer and the warrior are done, they move into the final stage, which is called the magician. Now, don't be put off by the term magician. We could call that wise elder. But let me tell you why it might be called magician. Let me give you some insight into that. Let's just suppose that you could have all the wisdom you have today and have back your high school body, your high school looks, and go back and everybody else is the same as they were and you're the only one that knows. All you have to do to be well liked is to like other people and appreciate other people. Wouldn't you have magic? Wouldn't it look to them like you had some magic? And you can probably think of times in your life when it did seem that somebody else had some magic that the majority of people didn't have. And it probably was something of that kind, something that they understood about how life works that other people didn't get yet. So as you grow older and you go through these stages, you arrive finally at the stage of magician, which is simply the stage when, yeah, you do have a clue. You know how a few things work. Um, and you could help other people with that, and that's what the magician usually does, is, is turn around and, and um, you know, give some advice to other people, help other people with things that they're trying to accomplish. Make sense? All right.